Today we're going to talk about Casey's theorem. Here's what it states. Suppose you have a large circle, and then you take four circles that are tangent to the large circle. For now, we're going to suppose that all the four circles are internally tangent to the larger circle. Now take each pair of these four small circles, and for each pair, draw the outer common tangent line, and take the segment enclosed between the two points of tangency. For example, this segment, and then call it A. Then take this segment analogously and call it B, take this segment, call it C, this segment D, this segment here E, and this segment here F. Each of those six segments comes from taking the outer common tangent line of each pair of circles, and then taking the segment between the two points of tangency. Case's theorem states that A times C plus B times D equals E times F, similarly to what Ptolemy's theorem states. If you remember, Ptolemy's theorem states the same thing, but instead of taking circles and tangent lines to those circles, we just take points on the circle and connect the points. This means that if the four circles here, 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 and here have a zero radius, then they would essentially turn into this point, this point, this point, and this point, and then Ptolemy's theorem would give us that AC plus BD equals E times F. There are two important things to note. The first one is that the circles need not necessarily be internally tangent to the larger circle, they can also be externally tangent to the larger circle. But in this case, we might need to adjust the definition of the segments A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are the three options you could have. If you have two circles that are internally tangent to the larger circle, then take their outer common tangent line and take the length of this segment here. If one of the circles is internally tangent and the other is externally tangent, then they are on opposite sides of the large circle, and so you should take their inner common tangent line and take the length of this segment between the two points of tangency. And if both circles are externally tangent with respect to the large circle, then they are located on the same side of the larger circle, outside of it, and so you should take the outer common tangent line and you should take this segment between the two tangency points when dealing with Casey's theorem. For example, here's how Casey's theorem looks like in the case when only one of the circles is internally tangent and the other three circles are externally tangent. Then we take this outer tangent line, this inner tangent line, because this circle and this circle lie on different sides of this circle, then this inner tangent line here, the outer line here, the outer line here, and the inner line here. Then the same statement holds AC plus BD equals EF. The second thing to note is that Casey's theorem is true also in the reverse direction. Suppose we have four circles, and then we draw their outer common tangent lines, and calculate the distances A, B, C, D, E, and F, and they happen to satisfy A, C plus B, D equals E, F. Then, there are two cases. Either there exists a circle that touches all other circles internally, or there exists a circle that touches all the four circles externally. We don't know which one is true, but we know that at least one of these two statements must be true. We're not going to prove the reverse statement of Casey's theorem, because the proof is really, really hard and it's beyond the scope of this course, but we're going to prove the irregular version of Casey's theorem, that is, if we know that the four circles are tangent to the large circle, then we're going to prove that AC plus BD equals EF. Let's call the points of tangency of the four small circles with the larger circle, A1, A2, A3, and A4, and let's call the radii of the four circles by R1, R2, R3, and R4, and the radius of the large circle, let's call it big R. Let's construct the quadrilateral A1, A2, A3, A4, and let's label its sides A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, and F prime are its diagonals. Now we can apply the Mickey Mouse lemma six times. The first time for the segment A, which equals A prime times the square root of 1 minus R1 over R times 1 minus R2 over R as given here, then the second time we can apply it for b and b prime, and then we can apply it for c and c prime, d and d prime, and we can also apply it for the diagonals e and e prime, and f and f prime. We get these six equalities here. Now let's consider the expression ac plus bd over ef, and let's replace each of a, b, c, d, e, and f with the expressions from here. Then in the numerator, we're going to get a equals a prime times the square root of 1 minus r1 over r, 1 minus r2 over r, 
and then times c, which is c prime times the square root of 1 minus r3 over r, 1 minus r4 over r. So a times c would be a prime times c prime times the square root of 1 minus r1 over r, 1 minus r2 over r, times 1 minus r3 over r, 1 minus r4 over r. Similarly, when we take b times d, this translates to b prime times d prime times the square root of 1 minus r1 over r, 1 minus r2 over r, 1 minus r3 over r, and 1 minus r4 over r. And this square rooted expression is actually equal for ac and for bd. So we can take it in front, and in the parenthesis, we get a prime c prime plus b prime d prime. ef equals e prime times f prime times the square root of 1 minus r1 over r, 1 minus r2 over r, 1 minus r3 over r, and 1 minus r4 over r. So we get this expression here. And now note that the two square rooted expressions in the numerator and denominator are actually equal, so we can cancel them, and then we're left with a prime c prime plus b prime d prime over e prime f prime. And now let's return back to the drawing. We see that a prime c prime plus b prime d prime equals e prime f prime by Ptolemy's theorem applied for the quadrilateral a1, a2, a3, a4, because this quadrilateral is cyclic. And therefore, here, a prime c prime plus b prime d prime equals e prime f prime. So this expression equals 1, from which it follows that ac plus bd equals ef as desired. Now from this proof, it should be clear why we take the inner common tangent line instead of the outer common tangent line when two of the circles touch the larger circle on two different sides. And that's because if we want to use the Mickey Mouse lemma for two circles that are tangent to the large circle on two different sides, then we need to use the inner common tangent line instead of the outer common tangent line. The proof of Casey's theorem for all other configurations of the four circles is analogous to the one I showed here. You first use the Mickey Mouse lemma and then you use Ptolemy's theorem. Here's the optional problem. We have an equilateral triangle and this here is its circumcircle and this circle is externally tangent to the circumcircle. Then we draw the tangent lines from each vertex of the equilateral triangle to this small circle, so we mark this segment A, this segment here B, and this segment here C from each vertex to each point of tangency. We need to prove that A plus B equals C. And here's the solution. Let the side of the equilateral triangle equal X, so this is X and this is also X. And now let's consider each of the vertices of the equilateral triangle as a circle with radius 0. Then we can apply Casey's theorem for this circle, this circle, this circle, and this circle, each one tangent to this large circle. From Casey's theorem, we get that a times x plus b times x equals c times x, as given here. And now we can cancel out the three x's from the equality and get a plus b equals c as desired.